Hi, I'm Dustin Abbott, and I'm here today to take a look at the new Tamron 18 to 400 millimeter all-in-one or super zoom lens. This, of course, is a lens that has a lot of people intrigued, and Tamron's series of super zoom lenses are you know, some of the best selling in the industry. It's a place where they've had a bit of a lead for quite a while, going back to their 18 to 270 millimeter design, and then they have since introduced um, both a smaller range, 18 to 200 millimeter, and then also a 16 to 300 millimeter. But this, of course, pushes the envelope on the telephoto in much further, out to 400 millimeters. And since this is designed for APS-C crop sensor cameras, that means on a Nikon or adapted onto a Sony body that um, it that is the equivalent of 600 millimeters of reach and on a Canon APS-C with a 1.6 times crop factor which I'm reviewing here on a Canon 80D body that is the equivalent of 640 millimeters of reach on a full frame camera so that's obviously very significant and and so it means that um, people that are doing all-in-one or travel they're not only going to be able to get wide angle but they're going to get a pretty incredible amount of zoom out of this now any kind of super zoom type lens is a series of compromises to make it work because obviously this is the smallest lens that I'm aware of for uh, DSLRs that will allow you to get out to 400 millimeters and it's also the lightest lens that I'm aware of that reaches out to 400 millimeters so that being said it's a little bit um, heavier than what some of the competitors are it comes in at 1.56 pounds or 710 grams and so uh, the, for example, the 16 to 300 millimeter uh, lens from Tamron that's, that's pretty similar in design and build, it's uh, about 550-ish um, grams. And so this is a little bit heavier, obviously, but of course that extra 100 millimeters of reach is significant. And uh, the engineering that needs to happen to accomplish that is also significant. The lens itself, as you can see, is relatively compact. It is under five inches long, 4.88 inches or 123.9 millimeters but as you can see when it is fully zoomed out it nearly doubles in length another additional four plus inches um, will extend out there as a part of the zooming mechanism we're going to jump in and we'll just take a closer look here at the build together and a couple of issues that i have observed as a part of the build itself Okay, we're going to highlight just a few of the uh, strengths and uh, weaknesses of the design here. Obviously, looking at the lens at uh, just in general here, we can see that it's a nice looking lens and uh, follows uh, Tamron's current design language, which I've now seen on a couple of lenses translated into a consumer grade. So this is a trickle down effect from their SP series. And while nothing here is metal like it is on the SP series, we do see that there's similar design language overall and they have their you know luminous gold ring positive note here is that at the uh, lens mount we do have a, a gasket here and so there is some a weather sealing that's a part of the design which is a great thing when you consider that this is going to be a lens used quite often for travel now uh, looking around to the front there is a 72 millimeter front filter thread not particularly common um, at least amongst the lenses that this would be shared with it's uh, Canon has a number of uh, prime lenses that are at 72 millimeters but um, certainly not a standard amongst consumer grade lenses there are two switches on here AF MF and then the vibration compensation on and off this does have uh, their vibration compensation and so uh, on the note of the autofocus, manual focus switch, this lens does not have full-time manual override. And so that um, brings up one of the uh, problems here that I do want to just delineate for you in terms of the build. And that is that when the uh, focus takes place, you will find that this ring, um, it does rotate. And so uh, depending on, you'll see that it moving there. And, and so as a result, if you're holding here, as I tend to support sometimes, you can't interfere with that. There is no full-time manual override. You have to switch to manual focus before you can access that ring. So just one thing to be aware of there. Another thing that I do want to note is that the uh, although it has loosened up some already, 
Um, the zooming mechanism is not quite as smooth as what I would have seen always, and there's a little bit of a kind of sticking point here between 50 and about 200 millimeters. And so if you're planning on kind of zooming in during video, you may be a little disappointed by that. However, I do think it's loosening up. On a positive note, there is a zoom lock here, but the lens shows zero inclination towards zoom creep. Um, and so that, I guess, is the upside of there being pretty heavy damping on this. You can see that there are actually three different sections of barrel that extend. But on a positive note, there is absolutely no wobble or play there. Everything is nice and tight. And so a, you know, a decently made lens, um, a kind of a, you might call this an international lens. It says designed in Japan. It is made in China with a lens hood that is made in the Philippines. So as you can see, there are some strengths and weaknesses there. This is an attractive lens. It does have some degree of moisture resistance or weather sealing. So if you're pairing it with an APS-C body like this ADD, for example, that also has some moisture resistance, it means that, you know, you have a little less fears when traveling of the intrusion of dust or moisture. I will note, however, that due to kind of the bellows design of this, it's definitely pushing some air in and out as a part of that. So I wouldn't be surprised even with some moisture resistance, dust resistance to find some dust get in there over time. But overall, you know, as far as these consumer grade lenses go, this is a nicely built lens other than those kind of two, you know, minor criticisms that I have to offer up. Now the zoom range is a 22 point you know, two, three times zoom, which is, it is the world's largest at this point, And it allows you to go from very wide to extremely zoomed in as the series of images show just how extreme that focal range is. So the upside of that, of course, is that in one lens, you definitely can shoot just about every type of photography imaginable. But uh, understand at the same time that there are some limitations, optical limitations when it comes to that. And so as far as the images I'm seeing coming out of the camera, on a global level, they look pretty good. I would like to see a hair bit more contrast, and, um, but I mean, you can't expect miracles. And of course, a lot of the time I'm reviewing lenses that cost many times more than this and are optimized for one single focal length, prime lenses. And so uh, obviously you can't really compare expect them to compare. It's just not a reasonable thing. But I think that for most shooters, they will be satisfied with the image quality they get. Just don't pixel peep too much. Um, it's not that the detail is terrible, but neither is it going to blow you away when you, uh, you know, zoom into a pixel level on images, particularly on the longer end. Expect a lens like this, and that's certainly the case here, to be strongest in the middle of the focal range. And so, you know, anywhere between 30 and uh, you know about a 200 millimeters is going to be the strongest portion of the actual zoom range and so you know on the the wide end is actually not bad but at 400 millimeters expect a little bit of loss of of detail it just doesn't render the fine details all that exceptionally in my opinion at the same time images are quite useful and and certainly i um, mean most kinds of applications are going to look just fine they'll look great the other thing that's nice as a part of this is that because of a reasonable minimum focus distance, you actually get a pretty exceptional magnification ratio, almost a, um, a one to three or a one third life, life size. That's a 0.34 times um, magnification figure. And so it means you can also do some pseudo macro type work or probably macro enough for, you know, if you want to shoot, um, you know, flowers or even insects up close you have the ability to do a pretty decent job of that. But again, don't expect that at a pixel level for the fine detail to render like a true macro lens would. I think basically you need to temper your expectations that if you're looking for something that can do everything reasonably well, this lens actually does pretty good for that. But if you're looking for it to uh, compete with, um, you know, lenses with either a much, much smaller zoom range or a prime lens, I think that that is an unreasonable expectation of that. One thing that I did notice in terms of optical you know, weaknesses, I did see a little bit of flare, and so make sure to use the lens hood. But you know, because of such an extreme um, focal length, it's a fairly shallow lens hood, and so um, it's not going to provide really probably as much shading as what the lens needs. On the plus side, it is included, which puts it ahead of a lot of the Canon equivalent or Nikon equivalent lenses. 
The other thing to note, however, is that there, if the sun is in the frame at the right point, you will expect to see some um, ghosting effects going across there. There is a little bit of chromatic aberration in certain kind of extreme scenarios, but although there's not yet a, a standard profile in Lightroom, I found that just clicking the a Lightroom box for remove chromatic aberrations basically did the trick. The other thing that I think is a positive here is that I, I took a look at the distortion from the lens and, and I noted that in field use I w really wasn't seeing extreme amounts of distortion and even when I did the brick wall test I found that you know there there certainly is some barrel distortion on the wide end but it's a fairly simple pattern and again there's not a profile but I just you know clicked on the 16 to 300 profile thinking that they might have a similar optical profile and it seemed to work reasonably well there's a little bit of vignette but it's not extreme if you zoom out a little ways you'll get a little bit of pin cushion distortion but again it's not extreme and really at 400 millimeters I didn't find the distortion to be all that bad and so uh, that's one of the areas where, for example, the 18 to 270 millimeter, it had a really extreme, really difficult barrel distortion pattern, that kind of mustache pattern that is hard to correct. No such problem here. And so Tamron has done a, a good job of minimizing what can be a pretty serious optical defect from a lens like this. And so this lens, as it comes to market, is uh, a lens that I think will be quite popular. Um, it has a, a fairly good build quality. The new HLD focus motor, um, the, the plus side of it is that while, as I've noted, it doesn't have full-time manual override, it does focus uh, quickly and quietly and uh, expect folks to be a little bit slower on the long end, but it still does fairly well. But again, don't expect like high-end tracking performance if you're wanting to shoot sports. Um, there are lenses that are dedicated for that kind of work, but for most settings, most shooters, this lens will get the job done. Um, focus accuracy seems to be pretty good, and of course it is compatible with Tamron's tap-in console, and so you can do some tweaking to the behavior. The vibration compensation isn't the smoothest that I've seen from Tamron. I did know Notice a little bit of jumping when it actually starts up and then sometimes while you're just trying to hold steady I'll see a little bit of in movement that is induced in the viewfinder from the VC but at the same time I found it to be pretty effective and so at 1 25th of a second at 400 millimeters which remember on this cannon body is like 640 millimeters uh, um, at 1 25th of the second, I got about 60% keeper rate. Moving down to 1 15th, I got about a 50% keeper rate. And then I moved down to 1 10th, which is really expecting a lot at that kind of uh, range. And uh, I still managed to get about a 30% acceptable keeper rate. And so it does the job, it's just not the smoothest that I've seen. In terms of operation, it's fairly quiet. And so uh, the other thing about the HLD motor is that it does work fairly well for video and it gives you a quieter and a little bit smoother focus transitions. A little bit like Canon's STM, just not quite as effective for video work than that. But at the end of the day, I think that this lens achieves its purpose. It gives good enough image quality. It gives an incredible, unrivaled focal range. Its price is, you know, reasonable. Uh, for what it provides and you know market forces will probably you know drive it down a little bit further in the future and so I think if you're looking for either an all-in-one solution you really really don't like changing lenses you'll probably be happy with this and of course if you're looking for a travel option again an all-in-one solution I think that once again you will be satisfied as well as long as you bring reasonable expectations to the table if you'd like to see some images that I've taken with uh, this lens over um, the last several days, I've got linkage in the description down below to an image gallery there. There's also some buying links if you would like to purchase one for yourself. I'm Dustin Abbott, and if you haven't already, you can follow me on social media. You can become a patron of mine. My P Patreon account there is linked below. And of course, if you haven't already, please click that subscribe button. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.